In this video, we're going to show you some of the best things to do, places to eat and sites you must not miss when you're in Munich. Join us on a culinary adventure as we explore the vibrant Victorian Mart, indulge in delicious pastries at Café Frischut, and discover the historical treasures of Marienplatz. Get ready to witness the enchanting Glockenspiel clock show and savour traditional German dishes like schnitzel and currywurst at Andy's Krabler Garden. Don't miss out on the local delicacy Kaiser Schmarrn at Tartenbach. We'll experience the beauty of Munich's gardens at Hofgarten and the iconic English garden. Finally, toast to a legendary day at the Hofbrau House. This is your guide on the best things to do in the Bavarian capital. So let's go! Starting off bright and early, our first stop is the vibrant and iconic open-air food market located in the heart of Munich. The Victorian Mart is Munich's oldest food market and was established in 1807. Nestled in the city centre, this bustling marketplace has been a beloved culinary and cultural hub for over two centuries. Here you can find an array of fresh produce, traditional Bavarian fare, international cuisine, fresh flowers and of course, beer. This bustling market is open from 8 a.m. Monday to Saturday. Here's a quick tip, if you see these fountains around Munich but are unsure if the water is drinkable, look out for this sign that says Trink Wasser, which means drinking water. Fill up your bottle and save some money on water. Second on our list is to try some German pastries. Okay, so we're here now in this cafe where they serve this Bavarian dish called a Smutschnadel. It's basically a dough, kind of like a donut that's fried in lard and it looks like this. It's very nice and airy. Oh, if you look at it at the back, you can see through it. So how it's usually eaten is you just sprinkle some sugar on top. And so we've got this, it's just plain dough. And we've also got this one which is kind of like a donut and I think it's filled with with the apricot jam. Yeah. So this one already has sugar on top. I'm very excited to try. It's a very light donut. Without the grease, you expect it to be like greasy, but it's not. It's really nice. They also serve other classic German pastries, such as the Simple Krapfen, a German donut filled with apricot jam. It's a great way to take a break from all the sightseeing and just soak in the atmosphere of the cafe scene in Munich. After a delicious breakfast, we head to Munich's central square, Marienplatz. This is the central square of Munich and it is surrounded by many historical sites such as the old town hall built in the 15th century. Picture this, gothic style, towering spires, intricate carvings. It's like stepping into a medieval fairy tale. When you're here, don't leave Marienplatz without experiencing the enchanting Glockenspiel clock show. This intricate mechanical marvel is made out of 43 bells and 32 life-sized figurines that showcases a medieval tournament and the Shuffle Tanz Cooper's Dance. The Glockenspiel clock show starts at 11am or 12pm, so make sure to be there if you want to watch it. Just a one minute walk away from Marienplatz stands an 800 year old church called St. Peter's Church, which serves as a prominent landmark. St. Peter's Church was originally constructed in the 12th century, making it the oldest parish church in Munich. This church isn't just an architectural marvel, it's deeply woven into Munich's cultural fabric. For centuries, it has been a place of worship, community gatherings, and even refuge during times of conflict. When you visit St. Peter's Church, don't just admire its exterior, venture inside to witness the beautiful intricate baroque interior. When in Munich, eat like the locals and try out a schnitzel. Schnitzel is a typical German specialty made from pork cutlet that's been pounded till it's very thin then breaded and deep fried. Just look at the size of this schnitzel. Oh my god, it's like massive. If you look at it, there's actually a whole nother piece here. I thought it was just one. This is definitely enough for two people to share. Listen to the sound of it. <laughs> We also got another German classic, the curry wurst. It's a grilled sausage covered in a blanket of thick curry sauce and often served with a side of fries. The sauce is sweet, sour and not really that spicy but mixes well with the juicy German sausage. To wash it all down, we ordered a glass of beer and it was delicious. 
Another local delicacy you have to try is Kaiser Schmarrn, and this cozy beer hall slightly outside of the city centre serves one of the best we've had. Kaiser Schmarrn is a scrambled pancake dusted with icing sugar and it comes with an accompaniment of sweet apple sauce. Crispy on the edges and soft on the inside, it's one of our favourite desserts in Munich. So we are now at Odeonsplatz, which is a large square in central Munich and this place has played a pivotal role in Bavarian history and has witnessed numerous events such as grand celebrations as well as tumultuous uprisings. One interesting fact about this place is that during the Munich Beer Hall Putsch, which is a failed coup d'etat by the Nazi party, an exchange of shots was fired here. A total of four policemen died in this exchange and a black plaque now stands in this spot beside Odium Platz with their names on it. Now just steps away from the Odium Platz lies the Munich residence, an architectural masterpiece and a testament to the Bavarian royalty's opulence. The Munich residence traces its origins back to a medieval castle in the 14th century. However, it evolved over the centuries into a magnificent palace complex, reflecting the changing taste of Bavarian rulers. While exploring the Munich residence, you'll encounter stunning spaces like the Antiquarium, one of the most beautiful Renaissance halls in Europe. The exterior of the palace, however, was badly damaged during World War II, and our walking tour guide pointed out that from afar, although the windows and carvings look real, you'll notice up close that so much of it was only painted on after being destroyed. Only some of the original window frames like these were salvaged and put back in place after the war. It's these intricacies why you'd never be able to tell upon first glance which is why I would recommend going on a walking tour like we did to understand the sites better. So make sure to check out the description if you want to go on the same tours as we did. Hof Garden holds a special place in Munich's history as one of the first Renaissance gardens in the world. It was designed in the early 17th century, making it a true testament to Munich's cultural heritage. As you wander through Hof Gardens, you'll notice its elegant layout, featuring a central temple dedicated to Goddess Diana. Surrounding this temple, you'll find carefully manicured lawns, serene fountains, and enchanting pathways that make it the perfect place for a leisurely stroll. Next, we can't talk about parks in Munich without mentioning the English Garden. Home to one of the largest inner city parks in the world, it's the perfect way to spend a day out surrounded by nature. Being over 375 hectares, it's even bigger than the Central Park in New York City. One of the must-see sites include the Ice Bark Well or River Surfers which surf along the canal all year round, even during winter. The strong current flows from the man-made Ice Bark River and the locals have been surfing here for over 40 years. We were here during November and it felt so cold just watching them do this crazy experience. But if you want to try it out for yourself, we'd highly recommend going with a guide that knows what they're doing. We've got a link down below if you want to check that out. Don't leave Munich without trying another one of their specialties, the Spatzel. The Spatzel is essentially German egg noodles but cut up into really small pieces. Ours came coated with alpine cheese and crispy onions. The cheese gives the Spatzel a wonderful creamy rich flavour, while the onions just further enhances this texture. Although it did become a little too salty after a while so we couldn't resist getting another beer to balance out that saltiness. We also got some sliced roasted pork which is a German dish. Needless to say, the pork skin was extra crispy and the meat just kind of melts in your mouth. To end the day, of course we're visiting the famous Hof Brauhaus. Established in 1589, Hof Brauhaus is renowned as one of the world's most famous beer halls. Even if you don't drink beer, the beautifully painted ceilings, the lightning atmosphere, the locals playing Bavarian music is worth taking a look. These beer mugs are the size of my face and for a lightweight like me, it's more than enough. It's just the perfect way to end your trip on a high. So that's it for this video guys. If you like the tips that we shared today, make sure to like, subscribe and follow our channel so you don't miss more videos like this. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. Bye!